What's up everybody? This is Brad and today we are going to be mixing down some audio from the Pocket Operator Arcade. Open up Pro Tools here and we have a few instances of Studio Rack. First and foremost, I set the tempo of the session to the tempo that was on the PO20. Um, and by and large, what we're going to be trying to do here, I think, is raise the overall volume, get a little bit more thump out of the bass, because um, there's a lot of those those sub frequencies and just that, that kick drum that's there. We want that to like really sound like a kick drum here. And then um, any high frequencies, you know, anything that might be kind of uh, just a little bit too much. We're going to see if we can get rid of those. So let's go ahead and do a quick look at our plugins and see what we got going on here. We have Q, this is Q3 here, but we're not using the third one. Um, so I've since changed this, but we are getting out a little bit of, uh, let's see, what is this? 196, 200. So let's see what this is here. Okay, so like a little bit of a boxiness there that we, I, I've already mixed this session. So just kind of getting that out. Let's see what we're doing on the higher frequencies. Yeah, so there's that, that harshness that was there. Um, just getting rid of some of that, and that's essentially it. So. Um, all of the high pass filtering and stuff, I'm going to do that within other plugins, but, uh, you know, so we got some boxiness that we're getting rid of and, uh, and some harshness here. So then moving on to the Sheps 73, this was actually one of the very first plugins that I got from waves. And, uh, I've just been using it more and more these days, wonderful high pass filter. Um, and we're setting this at 50 without the high pass. And then with the high pass, just cleaning, just cleaning it up a little bit. So the high frequencies here, this high knob, you know, I think it's just a, a shelf here. Um, this is going to be super sensitive with content like this because it is, you know, so much high frequency. So I'm actually taking out a little bit, um, taking out some low mids here too. Let's take a look and see what these low mids are that we're getting rid of. Okay. So kind of just a, um, you know, that frequency range, it doesn't sound that bad, but I think it just kind of, you know, I decided to get rid of it. Let's, let's start taking it down bit by bit and then, you know, kind of do like a little bit of AB here. Yeah, so it, it does, gives it a little bit of a cleaner sound there. Let's check out the lows. So this is without, oh, we're actually doing, okay. Yeah, so I just raised the, uh, a 110 there just by 2 dB so really really not too much but um but there is some thump to the arcade that can be found like yeah hear that like so it's really just up to your taste so then um mostly yeah everything i've got at least on the initial track here is just eq so we get the pull tech um this is another one i've grown to learn love i'm still learning um so taking out a little bit of 60 here boosting it actually taking out a fair amount boosting it just a hair so we're getting rid of a lot of 60 and then boosting it up at 110 um, so kind of choosing which frequency on the low end that we actually want to to bring out instead of just kind of boosting everything that's that's there. So again here we got the highs taking out quite a bit of the highs, a, a fairly substantial boost there on the three. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, so that's a nice nice crisp frequency there. I really like that. It's a you know, and I think this could even go like. Four or five, maybe if you wanted to, like really solid. Another one of my favorites uh, that I use this on almost every song, the NLS channel, the NLS summer. Um, so I'll walk you through what I think of these presets here. So the spike, this is just my go to default kind of thing. The mic. I think has, I think that the mic has a lot more uh, roundness to the low end. And 
the Nevo is kind of like a little bit more of a trebly sound, I think. And in this case, I, I think that spike was just more of an all-around good thing. Um, I do tend to use mics sometimes. Um, so let's get back to the, the PO20 specifically. One thing that I do really like about mixing uh, songs off here is that they come in all as one track. Um, and you can do patterns on the PO20, but I actually do actual takes where, where I'm uh, changing the patterns live as I record them. I make videos of them, and it's, it's a nice little performance thing to add to it. So here, you know, I got a good take. And um, this is the, the level that I'm working at here. Nothing, nothing too crazy, you know, keeping it fairly safe. So, oh, another thing worth noting here, I did initially try to have some stereo with here. I love Waves S1 Imager, a wonderful preset from Dave Pensato. Um, but I find that the, uh, the PO20, probably all of the pocket operator stuff, they actually come in fairly mono. There's not a whole lot of stereo action there to be found. So I went ahead and bypassed that, removed that. Um, so on the master, I've got CLA mixed down, uh, another one of my kind of go-tos. Um, getting a little bit of, uh, a little bit more bass response. Again, the, the, the treble here, I think just must be super, super hot. Uh, this is an older mix that I did from a few weeks ago. And, uh, and I think every step I was trying to get rid of the treble. Um, and then the glue, I try to keep that at around one-ish. You know, so like, a little bit of one, nothing doing too, too much. So this is, this is an important piece here with the SSL. Um, I just recently actually started reading up on the compressors and, and what they are, and I'll switch over to this one because this is cooler to look at while I talk. Um, so just reading over the different types of compression and what they do and how to use them, the SSL, I read is better for drums. And I figured that with the, with this content from the pocket operator, a lot of it is so drum heavy that I, f I felt like the, uh, the SSL was the go-to. And I actually did bypass the, uh, the Puig Child. Kramer tape, I do like to run this when I do a lot of the PO20 stuff. Sometimes it just kind of comes in here a little bit too hot. And uh, let's see, we can see this in. That's not, it's not too bad. Yes, yeah, so we got the uh, a substantial amount of makeup gain there. I like to keep the analog in there just for the hell of it. I don't necessarily know, you know, what the the difference is, but every every little thing counts. Some nice little filter action there from the. Uh, uh, PO20. So, oh yes. So at the very end, um, this is be, becomes more and more important if you have multiple tracks, which we don't. But there is another instance here with the bus. So before we had the uh, NLS channel, and this is the NLS bus. And you just want to make sure that these match. You don't have to, but it does help. And so I used to use the Kramer tape all the time. Lately, I've been using the J37, and again, we we got a um, high again high frequency smoothing round bottom. So that was definitely my aim when I mixed this stuff, is I wanted to not kill people's ears with those high frequencies and to uh, to to give the bottom end a little bit more oomph. So we start out with this preset. I don't even know if I changed it. A lot of times I will. Take a look at the the, uh, the input output. Make sure that's good. Um, the wow and flutter is a ton of fun um, to to mess around with. I know I'm just kind of showing you guys different plugins here, but this is the, this is my my preset that I use when when I do anything with the uh, with the PO20. Now this is you know everything's all set up. It sounds good, I think. Um, but yeah, the the wow and flutter on the J37 a ton of fun. If you're doing some experimental stuff, um, you can get like a nice little like a tremolo effect to it. Greg Wells, Mixcentric. Um, I really, really dig this plugin. Lately, I've been more and more careful about the input. Um, let's go ahead and go back to the beginning here in a second. Um, I've been more and more careful about the input and output. Don't try not to overload it. Trying to make sure 
that that I just kind of use this to taste and that I don't go overboard with it because it is one of those plugins where um, where, you, where you can just kind of go ham with it. So the preset I'm using here is the Fairy Dust, which uh, does seem applicable here. Again, so we're, we're getting the green light off the level, so we're not hitting anything too hard. They might bump up a little bit when the drums come in, but uh, pretty much that sounded pretty crispy. I like it. Um, and on the NLS channel bus thing, um, I do like to hit the drive a little bit on here. Usually what I'll do for pretty much everything, hit it to the max, hit it to zero. It'll find a nice happy medium. All right, so I really, truly hope that you guys enjoyed this and found this video useful. Mixing down a song on the Pocket Operator Arcade. Um, I learned how to mix from YouTube years ago. I used to hate it. I used to not even know about it. And uh, I'm certainly no expert. But um, the the goal in general here was just to kind of do um, some some sculpting of the sound. You know, at, at every stage, we were trying to shave off a lot of that high end that can just get so brittle on this thing. Um, and just kind of give it a little bit more of like a darker color. That that was my uh, personal aim there. Um, and then I wanted to get a little bit more thump, some some bounce out of this. Oh, I'm, I'm hitting the uh, kick drum there. Yeah, that. So just kind of just getting that, getting everything that uh, that you possibly can out of that kick drum and, and the bass sound there. Um, and then raising the levels through the compression, as you can see. In the, in the video, we had the makeup gain going, I think, up like six or something, um, which which seems like a fair amount to me. I've got some videos on here that I filmed um, of me actually recording those songs live, if you want to check those out. There's playlists and stuff uh, on YouTube, and uh, I'll see you around.